MMA fan cast is here with Sydney Ross. Ladies and gentlemen, Sydney made her MMA debut uh, at Pinnacle FC 16 just a couple weeks ago. Sid, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. We, we have the uh, extreme pleasure of being able to watch you make your debut, uh, or your MMA debut anyway, Share with us your experience. How did that go for you? Um, we'll get into the actual fight a little bit later, but how was that experience? You know, something new, something um, you're young. And so this is pretty exciting for you. Right. Well, I knew I wanted to fight MMA for a pretty long time. Uh, I can clearly pretty much remember when – Dana White had said, I believe it was 2012, when he said women would never be in the UFC. I think I was like 12 years old, and I remember crying. So it was somewhere before then, around then. So I was just pretty much waiting till it was legal for me to fight. So it was pretty awesome to be able to finally get to accomplish that after wanting it for so long. So there was a pretty big crowd there um, at, at Prince Cape Arena. Um, I know you have boxing experience. Have you ever had a crowd that large? Have you ever had that kind of environment, that kind of atmosphere pr previously? Um, I don't know if necessarily I had experienced one that large. I don't really pay attention to how many people there are. I just, a big crowd is a big crowd. It's kind of all the same. Yeah, I've been, I've performed uh, a multitude of fights, tournaments in front of a lot of people. But definitely at the Prince Scrape, there you could kind of tell there's a whole lot of people. Huh. And and so you you had a pretty um pretty unique experience in that um you fought uh, a a young lady from a major gym, and she was cornered by a major star. So was there anything um, special about that? Uh. Well, I had uh, kind of stalked her on Instagram before ahead of time, and I saw the picture of her with Claudia Gedalia, and my corner was like, oh, you know, she doesn't train with her. She just sees her across the gym and goes and gets pictures with her. I didn't know she was actually cornering her until I saw her there, and I was like, well, you know, it is what it is. Claudia, I'm not fighting Claudia Gedalia. I'm fighting Lydia Warren, so... I, I think you, you may have uh, been able to hang a little bit with uh, Claudia the way you came out there. <laughs> Only half kidding. But no, you, you looked really comfortable. You looked really natural. Um, you, you dominated. I mean, I don't think Lydia did anything offensively to you. Uh, was that the game plan to just go attack and end the fight as soon as possible? Um, I didn't necessarily have a super strong game plan. Just because I wasn't, she had a jiu-jitsu background. She was there at Jackson Wink. We knew a little bit, like, they're kickboxing heavy. We knew that she was going to want to throw kicks. And I didn't really necessarily tell myself I'm going to go out there and just go for it. Um, I'm a pretty aggressive fighter, just naturally, like, that pressure forward. But we didn't have something strict to stick to because I feel like I might necessarily – not want to drift away from doing that if I see other opportunities. So I try not to keep myself to only have to do one thing. So you, you, you were a wrestler. You, you know, you wrestled in, in high school, correct? Yes. And, and so you've been in the combat sports realm for quite some time. Give us a little bit of background, share with us um, the things you've done and, and been through at the ripe old age of 18. Well, I, whenever I was probably a toddler, my parents had me in, you know, the daycare taekwondo type thing. And whenever I got a little older, my dad finally took me to this uh, judo school when I lived in Southern Maryland. It was called Southern Maryland Jiu-Jitsu Academy. And I trained there from when I was about some, a second grade all the way till I was 15 before I made the move to PA. Did a bunch of tournaments under my instructor there. And that's pretty much just how it started. So what, um, what boxing experience you, you, I know you just boxed this past weekend, uh, but you also ha have previous boxing experience. 
Yeah. Um, my dad, whenever I decided, I was like, oh, I'm interested in MMA. I'm going to do stand up stuff. I'd only been doing judo and jujitsu. So my dad boxing has been in his family for a couple of generations. He was like, okay, I'll teach you to box a little bit. So it started with my dad teaching me. And then when I moved here to Pennsylvania, I got in touch with a boxing coach. Um, his name's Jeremiah Witherspoon. And I took off with him. I was 17 when I had my first fight. I had just turned 17. So a little, a little over a year ago, I had my first boxing match. That's great. When, when's your birthday? Uh, January. Okay. So you, you, you were able to get a fight, an MMA fight within two months of your birthday. That's well, they actually had found something in December and they were waiting until I was 18 to send me the contract for me to sign it. Uh-huh. So I kind of found one before I was even 18. So you mentioned, so you mentioned um, Dana White in 2012 and you've always known you wanted to go into MMA and him saying that there will never be women in MMA. Who, who do you look up to as a fighter? Who have you in the past? Who do you look up to now? Are there, are there fighters you try to emulate or, um, or, or just, you know, look up to? And please don't uh, say Ethan Goss. <laughs> I won't. No, definitely not that guy. Um, as far as necessarily fighters overall, I would say my probably my favorite is um, Daniel Cormier <laughs> because he's just a. I think he's just a terrific guy. Just his, um, you know, setbacks he's faced, overcoming that, just his style, his, his wrestling. I think he's a really good, well-rounded fighter, but as far as women go, I am really into Rose Nama Yunus right now. I've been, I'm on the hype train Mm -hmm. (laughs) since all that went down. Yeah. She's certainly, uh, she certainly look has really improved since, uh, her days on the ultimate fighter. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, you debuted and I know that you're, looking forward to getting back into the octagon or yes. the cage. Um, I know you have some things that are close, but um, you have a, you, you've signed a, you've signed to fight, correct? On, on the next card for yes. Pentacle. Yes. I signed my contract yesterday. Yeah. And we're just, they're, we're kind of waiting on your opponents to sign theirs and, and then you'll be all set and have a match hopefully by tomorrow ready to announce yeah i hope that it gets pulled through and everything works together do you know anything about your opponent um what my coaches were able to find were her previous two fights and a wrestling tournament on youtube so are you um does being able to see some of her fights or anything like that does that change anything for you or do you think it's you won't even watch it or you'll let your coaches do that what do you think I watch it strictly just for just to see what her weaknesses are and her strengths are just to get an idea of what style of fighter I'm against. Um, It's not necessarily to psych myself up to say I've got this or to mm, because it could work either way or you could take it and be like, oh, you're scared of this person. I just look at it strictly for this is what she likes to do. This is what she doesn't really do a lot in her fights. This is what she's good at. This is where the holes are pretty much just for business. Gotcha. Um, your, do your parents own Gorilla House Gym? Is that, is that their gym? Is that your dad's gym? Yes. Okay. I, I, I thought, I, I thought um, Ethan had mentioned something to me previously that that was um so that's the gym that you um you train at that your your fight camp is at um and uh and so you've been around how long have your parents owned the gym uh 2015 is when they opened their first gym okay so you've been around the 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 fight game for a couple years now and and are accustomed to all that lifestyle that kind of stuff Right. Jim, you so, wanted to? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, so having done boxing and now you've gotten your first MMA fight, um, 
out of the way, so to speak. Is there anything that you can take from that first experience and, and also with the boxing and apply it to the next camp? I guess, you know, I don't know if you would call it a camp um, or, you know, preparing for your next opponent. Uh, I'm pretty much, I'm not going to keep it the same. I'm working on finding these more often and to train harder. I, even though it was a short fight, there were still things I could have done better. Um, just, I'm still picking up on flaws and working on them because never, just never stop evolving. So I'm always looking for ways to can so I can keep up with the fighters that I'm going to be faced with who are also going to be getting better as I take more fights. Yeah. Do um, you, you were kind of going in and out of there a little bit. Um, I don't know if, I don't think you moved the phone, but I just wanted to give you a heads up. Um, what did I want to ask you? Oh, how do you, when you like tell your friends at school, like, yeah, I had a mixed martial arts fight. You're still in high school. I don't know if we said that off air or on air. You're, you're, you're 18 years old. You're a senior in high school. What, what is that like? Yeah. I, I, I fought a mixed martial arts fight in Pittsburgh. Like how, how do people react to that? I try to punch my opponents in the face or choke them if I can, mm -hmm. you know, the usual stuff. Are you there? Yeah, you guys just went blurry for a couple seconds. Okay. I heard the question though. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, I I have people who think it's really cool, who think it's awesome, and they're supportive of it. And you know, I had people who were like, "Oh, I want to go to one one day." I um, try and they think they think it's cool. And there's some people who think it's odd and it's weird and. You know, I mean, whatever. There's just how people normally feel about the sport is the same input that they have. Um, some people don't even know that I do this. It's not like I go around and I'm like, yeah, I'm an MMA fighter. I'm real cool. I just. Well, I mean, that is pretty cool. <laughs> you you fought. <laughs> well, so here's the thing, Sid. You came out. Um, this was your MMA debut. You looked like a natural in there. You looked like you, you were very well prepared for it. You, you blew my mind. I mean, I knew you were 18 years old and, and watching you, um, you know, I, I was pretty busy during the event, but, but I've watched your tape a couple times since. And it was, it just blew my mind how natural you looked, um, and, and just, you look like a fighter and you're 18. And so how does that, what, what's that like? What's that feel like to hear someone or to just know that you own that? Like it was, that's who you are. It just looked like that's who you are. Uh, first, thank you. And um, <laughs> also I, uh, I mean, I worked for it. It's not like it came naturally. It wasn't, it wasn't like I was just, skilled it's just something I really really wanted and I I worked I work I try to work harder than anyone else in my gym I'm in there training with grown men every day and it's just you get it handed to you at practice every day and then you go out and you just put it together just working with people we have a lot of high level obviously Ethan he's a pro at Bellator we have other fighters um who are better than me and I just work with them, try to learn, stay humble. <laughs> yeah, that's great. You kept looking over at, uh, after and before the fight, you kept looking over to, to people near the entry w entrance way and you were pointing over at them and you, you kept yelling something. Do you, do you remember what you were saying or was it, um, was it clean? <laughs> it was clean. Yeah, it was, um, <laughs> My mom and uh, some of my friends from the gym were there, and I'm pretty sure I was yelling, like, I love you guys, just stuff like that. Yeah, that's great. Um, the, uh, there are a lot of people that um, I'm sure you 
have invested in you and have spent a lot of time tr training with you. So you have, you have the floor if there's people you want to thank and, uh, or I don't know if you had any sponsors for the fight or, or, or whatnot, but, um, this is your time to give them a shout out. Yes, I did have a lot of people who sacrificed their own personal time for no pay just to help me with the same goal, just to help me to get me there to win. Um, first of all, my dad, he uh, is the one who owns the gym. He's my head coach, you know, main supporter. Pretty much anytime I felt down or was upset about it, he was the one who, like, pretty much the voice in my head, keeping me straight, telling me what I needed to do to get better. Uh, the other person in my corner was Darren Cassidy. That's my wrestling coach. He comes and trains me on his own time. And he, his son, Caden Cassidy, comes in and works with me, same thing, on his own time. He's in high school too, you know, has other things to be doing than helping this girl train for an MMA fights, but he takes time out of his day and helps. So I'm really appreciative for those two. I feel like I've gotten a lot better just since working with them, which has been a shorter amount of time, a couple months. I do want to shout out Ethan. <laughs> You got to. He works with me um, every class. You know, he's a pro fighter. He doesn't have to work with amateur MMA fighters or people who are like four weight classes below him, but he does. He, he cares about everyone at that gym and takes it upon himself to help everyone get better. Yeah, I was out there. Um, we were out there, Jim. Wh when were we out there? Uh, ahead of the Bellator fight in State yeah, College, maybe I a month. I feel like it was um, late September. Okay, yeah. So we were, we were out there. Great gym. It's a beautiful gym. If you're ever in Altoona, Pennsylvania, check out the Gorilla House gym. Um, and uh, Sydney Ross will be there um, at, bringing down the house and – making her second appearance in uh, the cage in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania on June 9th. Um, that's a bout that is due to be signed uh, by her opponent at any moment. And so, um, although it's unofficial at this point, we're going to go ahead and let the cat out of the bag. Um, but you announced on um, – you announced June 9th is your next fight on social media like weeks ago, so – it's not a big deal to say anything now. <laughs> well, I mean, even if um, this opponent doesn't pull through or, you know, something happens, injuries, whatever, there's other people. I think I went through a couple people before I got my last fight. So, you know, just hopefully someone, if and not we, her. Yeah, and we want you on the card. So it's, you know, and you want to be on the card. So it's going to happen. So Absolutely. So. Thank you so much for joining us, Sid. It was great to watch you make your MMA debut, and um, it was great chatting with you and get to, getting to know you a little bit. Thank you. It was great. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thank you.